As Super Smash Bros. Ultimate moves into its secondary full year of competition, we're starting to get a clearer picture of the optimal way to play most of the game's enormous amount of characters. And alongside this march towards TAS level of perfection, the picture of who stands as the best main for each character in the game becomes clear as well. We started off this Herculean task with our video a few days ago talking about the best Mario, DK, Link, and Samus mains in the game. So be sure to check that one out if you haven't seen it already. And if you're still hungry for some more guidance or looking to stake your claim as the best main of your character before we get to covering them, check out ProGuides.com for an on-demand coaching through Instapro to get you prepared to compete at your next local, regional, or major. Our new Pro Pass grants you free passes to Instapro, along with a plethora of exclusive content all posted daily. Check the link in the description to learn more about Pro Guides. With that out of our way, we pick up the discussion from the last video right where we left off with the character listed as the 7th fighter included in the game, Fox, and the 10th best player in the world, Light, coming from Connecticut. Light's dedication to Fox McCloud obviously isn't able to compete with some Melee players who have been playing the Spacey for nearly two decades, but he's easily the most dedicated player in the Smash 4 era. Since the earliest Smash 4 events like Genesis 4, he's played almost exclusively Fox and Bracket in that three-year stretch up until today, only pulling out Wolf and Falco on very, very rare occasions in Ultimate. Even though there have been some tweaks to the engine and character from Wii U to Switch, this intimate understanding of his character gives Light an incredible advantage over his enemies because of the wealth experience he has with both uncommon interactions and high-pressure scenarios. We can see this coming through his incredibly consistent results throughout his Ultimate career. His lowest placing that he's ever gotten during a game's life cycle so far was a 25th at Shine 2019, losing to Juice's Falco and Suarez's Yoshi. Let's give some context to how incredible 25th being the lowest point is. MKLeo, the best Ultimate player in the world, has a 33rd place at Umabora 2019 as his worst placement. Current third best in the world, Tweak also has a floor of 33rd with his finish at Smash and Splash 5. In a game with so many matchups and characters that can lead to inconsistency, a player like Light who understands his character so well is able to shine through. Some of the highlights of Light's ultimate career so far have been a first place at NYXL in the first few months of the game's life cycle, his win at Ultimate Nimbus over players like Esam, Tweak, and Salem, and his more recent fourth place finish at Congo Saga beating Zachary, Gluttony, and T. And as for recent results, he's done a pretty solid job looking like he's going to keep his place at 10th best in the world. He may have racked up some less than desirable losses to players like Tosa's Young Link and Dill's Rob, but I think his already lengthy list of wins over Tweak, Shutone, Mars, Meister, Wadi, and Cosmos more than outweigh those minor missteps. So although someone like 39th ranked Luis would love to claim the title of the best Ultimate Fox for his own, it looks like Light will be the only one holding that prestigious title for the immediate future. A lot of these same comments about loyalty and belief in one's character also work quite well when discussing Esam, the best Pikachu main in the world. In a game dominated at the highest level by teenagers and young adults, the 27-year-old Esam stands as a member of the Smash Old Guard with his start coming all the way back in the Brawl era, with there being tournament results going way back as 2009 on his Liquipedia page. Esam also has incredible distinction shared by only a few legendary players in Smash's history such as Mewtwo King for being ranked top 100 in four different Smash games during his legendary career. He peaked at 68th best on the 2016 Melee rank, 4th best in the world in the 2012 Retro Brawl ranking, 14th on the Smash 4 PGR1, and matched that recently on Ultimate in his fall PGRU. However, Esam pathfinding his home with Electric Rat and becoming the best Pikachu main in the world didn't progress as neatly as Light. In Brawl Days, Pikachu was one of Esam's signature characters and Esam was considered the best Pikachu main back in that game as well, but he also used Ice Climbers almost as much as the Rat. This caused most to classify Esam as a dual main instead of having an Ice Seas as a secondary. But when hardware limitation didn't allow Ice Climbers to make an appearance in Smash 4, Nintendo indirectly forced Esam's hand to Pikachu and the rest from there is pretty much history in more modern Smash titles. While he had a pass with the game, Esam did also start competing seriously in Melee once more around mid-2015, but was known solely for his Samus. Esam didn't main Pikachu until Brawl, but after all, did you know, Esam actually stands for Eric Samus. Wow. This affinity towards Samus has leaked him into occasionally playing the character in Smash 4 and Ultimate now, so it definitely is worth mentioning when talking about him. And that basically covers the tale of Esam's career up until the release of Ultimate. He's had more of a bumpy road than light throughout his Ultimate career, especially near the start of great showings like winning Battle of BC2 and getting 4th at Full Bloom, which were surrounded by performances like 65th at Frostbite 2019, losing to Shoyo James and Luis, and 33rd at Prime Saga being eliminated by Ven Zelda. But easily the crown jewel of Esam's Ultimate career was his cathartic first major win in his Smash career at Glitch 7, where Pikachu did not drop a single set, while blazing through the bracket beating Leon, Light, Tweak, Nairo, and double eliminating Light. And it seems like this breakthrough has instilled a newfound confidence in the Pikachu main, as he finished off 2019 with some great performances like 5th, 
at Ultimate Summit 2 and two more first place finishes at EGLX and Mango's Birthday Bash. This has continued over into 2020 as well with Esam starting off the year not being able to defend his title at Glitch but with a solid finish at third beating Black Twins, Arfang, Rafi X, Cosmos, Stroder, and Mr. E while only losing to Dark Wizzy and the Buzz. His fourth place finish at Genesis the next weekend added even more names to the hit list, now including Nairo, Charlie the King, and winning the run back against Dark Wizzy. So Esam doesn't look to be slowing down anytime soon as he moves further into his second decade of playing competitive Smash. So if you haven't yet gotten accustomed to him talking about how busted his character is, you better start getting used to it. Character loyalty seems to be the theme of this episode with us continuing on with the penultimate player and character we're going to talk about with Elegant, the Luigi main who has stuck to the character since his start in the Smash 4 days. Elegant started competing around mid-2015 with EVO 2015 being listed as one of his first major events. It ended up taking quite a bit longer for Elegant to finally make his breakthrough in Smash from the first event compared to the other guys we've talked about today, but I think any up-and-coming player would be glad to follow in his shoes. Living in a region as strong as SoCal for sure was an aid in his come-up, and he first made appearances on a PR in his region about a year later as the 17th best in March 2016. 17th turned into 15th and then into 12th in 2016, eventually finishing off in 2016 as the 7th best behind players like Larry Lur, Void, and Tyrant. Climbing from new game to top 10 in the world in your region in just two years is a huge feat in itself but Elegant wasn't satisfied just yet going into 2017. He not only peaked as second best and never dropping lower than fourth in SoCal throughout the entire year, but he made his debut on a global PGR V3 rankings as 25th best in the world for the first half of the year and more than cut that in half to be held as the 11th best player in PGR version 4 ranking during the second half of the year. This stretch includes easily the most notable event in Luigi Main's career so far. His godlike run to second place at GTX beating the Cat, Samsora, Anti, and MKLeo that concluded with an epic 10 game grand final set. This legacy throughout the game's life cycle left him as the 27th best player in the world on the final PGR rankings for Smash 4 on the eve of the release of Smash Ultimate. But Ultimate was unfortunately not an exciting continuation of his Smash 4 success. Luigi has gone through much more of a cosmetic change from his previous form and although that never shook Elegant's loyalty to the character, Character, it definitely affected his gameplay. After starting 2019 off with a promising third at SoCal Chronicles, it was almost exclusively downhill from there. 193rd at Genesis 6, 65th at Prime Saga, 49th at Frostbite, and 33rd at Smash and Splash 5. It was not pretty at all, and despite all the clamor about Luigi's zero to death combos that were able to start from his new tether grab, there weren't much in terms of results backing this talk up. Elegant was listed as an honorable mention in the Spring PGRU, making it his first time since 2017 that he was not a top 50 player. But his two wins against Sam Sora, who ended the year ranked as the second best player in the world for sure, did the brunt of the work of carrying him to his placement as the 32nd best ultimate player in the world. And after feeling the painful taste of losing the title of top 50, it looks like Elegant is fighting hard to never have it again now that he started 2020. He's already won 2GG SoCal Chronicles, took a set off light and route to a 17th at Genesis, beat Luis and Void at Slopes Invitational, and most recently got 13th at Frostbite grabbing a win over Shutone. This high level of attendance doesn't look to be slowing down either of Emerald City 9 and 2GG Final Saga being listed as upcoming tournaments on a Smash GG account. So for sure it hasn't been the easiest road for Elegant to claim the title of Best Luigi in yet another Smash game, but the likelihood of him having the title stripped away from him seems fairly low with the momentum that he's finally started to build up in this new game. We'll finish off this video by taking our second of many trips to Japan. In this part of the series, we'll be talking about the best Ness main in the world, Gact. Just like Esam, he's been playing as Earthbound's main character since his start in a fighting game scene that happened way back in the Brawl days with his first tournament appearance being listed as way back in October 2013. But that all changed one cold weekend in Michigan at the Big House 7. Gak took full advantage of his first shot to show the rest of the world what Ness was capable of, with the 17th place beating Anti, Mistake, and Locust before being knocked out of the event unfortunately by his fellow countryman Raito in a Game 5 set. This singular shining event for sure placed Gak and Ness in a collective consciousness of the competitive Smash 4 community, but it alone wasn't enough to net him a spot on the season's PGR ranking. He unfortunately was never able to match the peaks he reached at the Big House 7 during his career in a game that caused him to never break onto the the PGR ranking. Gact continued his best to reignite the PK fire that allowed him to bring a solid event back to Japan with him in the start of the first full year of his ultimate career, but 49th placements at Smash and Splash and Evo brought smoke, but no flame. He had picked up some quality wins against some of the best in his region during the second half of 2019 with the likes of Leia's Greninja, Komei Shulk, 
and Choco Zero Suit Samus, but he was going to need something more than that to steal the title of the best main of his character from the very aptly named Best Ness, who finished the season at rank number 43 in the world. And at Congo Saga, he did just that, with the 13th placing that finally broke his USPB that he set with his breakout event. At the event, he beat Cosmos, Void, and Komei with his incredible run, stateside being stopped again by one of his fellow countrymen, this time T. This was enough to give him the extra bump to give him his first PGRU appearance at 29th best in the world and giving him the claim as the best Ness in the world by 14 spots. Gak's claim on this title is far from solid, especially with best Ness already moving towards him at lightning speed with the 25th place at Genesis 7 and a gold medal at Slopes Invitational, beating Luis, Pandarian, Elegant, Void, and Wadi. So keep your eyes on these two to continue to advance the Ness meta further as we move into the second quarter of 2020 Ultimate to see who claims the title of the best King of PK. And this finishes up our second entry in our series highlighting the best mains of each character in Smash Bros. Ultimate. There's so many characters to choose from to cover next an enormous cast of characters in Ultimate and so many incredible stories to tell of players grinding to become the best of their characters, so let us know in the comments below which player or character you want to hear us discuss next. But before you start typing away on why we should talk about your favorite low tier main, make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and put those notifications on so you can make sure not to miss out on any of the content of competitive Super Smash Bros. Ultimate in the future.